Today I want to show you how to create your own water slide decals in Cricut Design Space for use on acrylic blanks to be sealed with UV resin. It's important to note when shopping for your water slide decal paper that there are different kinds. First, you'll notice that we have laser and inkjet types, so you need to check what kind of printer you will be using because if you use the incorrect paper, you could damage your machine. Water slide paper also comes in clear and white backgrounds, so kind of anticipate what you would like your decal to look like. For this first example, I'm going to show you how to remove the background from this adorable photo of my friend's daughter. The original photo background is kind of loud, so I took this over to remove.bg. It's very simple. Find your image by clicking upload image and upload it and honestly it just does the rest for you you'll see here depending on the difficulty of your own image you may need to edit it a little bit but as you can see the background of this image was easily removed so you just want to download the image to your computer and name it whatever you'd like to be able to find later be sure to take note in what folder you are putting this file as well So going to Cricut Design Space, we're going to click New Project and you'll see the new canvas pop up. Our first step is going to be to upload the photo that we just downloaded with the background removed. So click Upload, locate your file, and either drop and drag it or use the buttons to navigate and find it. Once it's imported, I always just pick complex. I know that this is actually a very simply lined one, but I just, it's by habit, I just click complex. So everything looks good and I'm gonna click okay and I'm gonna select print then cut and upload that. On the next page, you want to select your image that you just uploaded and import image. The keychains that I'm using are two inches in diameter, but I am going to use a circle shape here with the diameter of 1.75 inches, just because I want a little bit of border around my finally cut image. So with the proportions locked, just enter 1.75 if you're going to use those same dimensions and use that as your kind of your guide for the size of the photo that you imported. I'm going to move her to the front and I don't want to put her whole body because I don't think it would look good. I'm just going to put her cute little face, but also keep in mind that there is a keyhole at the top. So you don't want to have the hole going through her head if you have a photo of a person. Once you get it where you like it, you're going to select both layers by clicking and holding down shift and then clicking splice. Once it's finished processing that, you're going to look in the layer panel and delete the parts that you don't want. You can either select them and push delete on your keyboard or right click delete. You'll see what we wanted is left there on the bottom and we're gonna get rid of all these layers. For this next part, we're going to add an offset, which is completely optional, but it is the reason that I am using a white background transparency. By adding the offset, it's going to put a boundary around her photo and it's gonna look like a sticker. So by selecting her photo and clicking offset and adjusting, you'll see a ghost line appear around her photo. And when you like the distance around the photo, click apply. Then adjust that offset color to whatever you'd like. For this next one, we're going to use this cute graphic that I have a link to in the blog post that's linked in the description of this video. Just like always, go ahead and either drop and drag or locate it and import it to your Cricut Design Space. Click Print and Cut and add that to your project. You'll see that when this propagates the photo, I noticed that the offset from the original photo did not get moved over with the photo and we forgot the last step. So here I want you to center um, horizontally and vertically both of those images and then you have to click flatten. Um, I'm better at doing this all in one step at the rest of the video but I forgot to do it on that first one. So just like we did with the photo of the little girl we're going to use a 1.75 diameter circle to measure um, how big we wanted the little pizza and watermelon guy. Get it to the size you like, and then I always just delete the circle so I can work without it there. Again, we're gonna use the offset on this and move it to a white. If you want a different color, you can. Select both the photo and the offset and click flatten. 
I'm making two of these, so I just duplicated that layer. The next keychain uses a digital paper that I will link in the blog post in the description of this video. And what you'll notice when you download this is that if you try to upload it to Cricut Design Space, it's actually a little bit too big. So we're gonna go over here to Luna Pick, which again, link will be in the blog post, and resize it. Locate your file and upload it. Click scale, and I changed this to, I think, 500 by 500 pixels, and you click apply scale, and you're going to save it to your computer. Name it something like scaled version or something that differentiates it from the other files. Just like with the other images, we're going to import this into Cricut Design Space. And everything looks good. Select print then cut, and then we're going to add that. Just like before, we're going to use a circle with a diameter of 1.75 inches. But I want you to note that the scale of the rainbows does change as you size up or down. So you kind of need to know if you want large or small rainbows when you are going to splice it with the circle. I'm changing the size here again, and I, I like the scale of the rainbow. So I kind of put it where I want the rainbows to be spliced, select both layers, and then click splice. Just like last time, delete the stuff you don't need. And we are not done yet. We actually need to add a circle cut out for the keychain. Open up another circle shape, make sure it's on top. And I just shrunk it down and eyed it. I did not give an actual size here, um, but you wanna click both of them and select a line vertically and bump that up to the top before you splice it. So select both of those layers, splice, and then delete the things that you don't need. And you'll be left with your rainbow background with a hole cut out where the keychain hole is. Go ahead and move that out of the way and we will move on to the text with offset portion. You're gonna select your text box here and I'm going to use a system font called Bakery. Again, the link to this font will be in the blog post. Select your font that you'd like and type out whatever you're gonna type out. I'm typing BSF, which is apparently the new BFF, um, if you're not aware. And I'm using a circle, resizing at 1.75 inches and just sizing the BSFs to what I want for that keychain. I'm going to choose what color I would like it to print out right there. You'll see I'm doing red for the watermelon pizza guys and just sizing it to fit that keychain. And then we're going to do another offset on this one. Go ahead and click your offset and adjust it. And when you get it where you like it, click apply. Don't forget to change that background color if you'd like to at this point. Select both the text and the offset and click flatten. Now. I always get rid of that thing because I don't need it. Duplicating because I'm making two, and then we'll move on to the next text. So again, select text, and this perfume font will be linked in the blog post. I'm going to click and write Von Schweetz, which is the nickname of the little girl in the first example. Now, personally, I don't like it just in a straight line like this. So I'm going to ungroup all of the letters and then select the Schweetz and bump it up underneath the Vaughn. When I like it all, I'm going to select it and then weld. Now, here is where we're going to select the text and change it to print then cut. And then at that point, you select what color you would like it to print out. Just like before, use a circle 1.75 inches in diameter and adjust your text to that size. See, it just looks so much better, like kind of squeezed together, a little more um, stylized. So again, doing offset, bumping it up just a little bit and apply and change that background color to white. Click both of those layers and click flatten. And you're all done with that one. Now for the third one, I'm again going to be using um, a system font and it is called Kale Berries. The link will be in the blog post. I believe I used the plump version of this one. And we're going to type on one side, what do you do? And the other side, I'm an accountant.
just like the other one I don't really like things when they're just in a straight line like that I think it looks boring so I'm going to ungroup all of them select the you do and I'm going to move that under just so it just looks more custom you'll see here in just a second I lost it on the page so select that and bump it over and then when you get it where you like it select all of it and weld it together you then need to go under operation and change that to print then cut so that we can select the color that we'd like for this text box as you see originally it's on basic cut when you go to print and cut that gives you the option to change it so we're doing pink for this side and the other side will do blue just like we did before we're going to resize it on that circle and we will do another offset for this one oops I grabbed both of them here control Z that select your text size it offset it select both layers and flatten If you don't want to do white offset, you can absolutely change it to whatever color you like. That's what I like about the water slide decal. Um, you have that custom ability. Now I bumped that one up just a little bit because I didn't want any tiny cutouts between the two lines of text. But it looks good to me and I'm going to change it to white and flatten. Obviously the next part is going to be essentially the same and hopefully you're getting used to the steps of putting the offset, flattening, changing the color and all of that. But I'm just gonna show you one more time. We're writing I'm an accountant and ungrouping the letters and just moving it to where it looks good. If you're on TikTok at all, you understand the reference to this. I have a cheeky friend who actually is an accountant and she thought it would be funny, so she requested this keychain. And here I wanted the I'm Anne to be like fitting between that uppercase A and the T. So I'm sizing up just so they kind of nestle in together. And then when I get it where I like it, I'm going to select all of it and weld it. Now it will be a basic cut and we select that layer and we go up to operations and choose print and cut to select our color. You'll notice that I'm just picking colors from the suggested ones, but if you know like the hex code for the color you'd like to use, you can absolutely go in and click more advanced and put that in for a very specific color if you'd like. So that looks pretty good. We click offset, apply, select both layers after we've changed the color and flatten. I'm doing one more keychain here that I didn't show the photo upload process for, which is that little unicorn. Um, for that, I'm gonna write magical AF. Um, I didn't show the horse upload because essentially it's the same as we've done with all the other images. But here again, you'll see I'm ungrouping and moving for a more custom look. Just going up to change from a basic cut to a print then cut so that we can select the custom color. I believe I'm doing pink for this one. And I'm gonna resize that. And then add the offset. Then 
that was pretty simple. It's already popping up the same size offset as we've used before. I'm gonna change it to a white, and then I'm gonna flatten that image. At this point, I am done. Um, so I'm gonna delete that circle, and we're gonna get all of these onto the size paper that we need for our water slide decal. Each of my keychains has a photo and a text, which is what I'm showing you here. Now, in order to do print and cut, we have to have the dimensions shown here, 9.25 by 6.75. So in order to do that, we're going to open up a shape and click rectangle, and we're going to unlock the proportions and enter those proportions that we just said. This is going to give us the workspace that will enable our machine to print and cut. When you get this sized correctly, go ahead and while that layer is enabled, click move to back. So this is the area that will be allowed to be print and cut on your machine. So just move all of your stuff around until um, everything's on there without being wasteful of your material because you'll see as we move to the print and cut, I'm only using about half of a sheet so I can actually use the other half later. Um, I just kind of move things 90 degrees so that they fit in all of the empty spaces. For these, I am not going to select bleed, um, so they can actually be kind of close. Because I did that white offset on most of them, the bleed is not necessary. The only one that would necessarily need the bleed would be the rainbow background, um, but I actually didn't have a problem with this cutting. So if you're doing something where you don't have offset, then you're going to want to use the bleed option when you print and set to cut. So it's a little tedious here, <laughs> but I just, I like to make use of all of my materials. I don't like to waste. So you'll see that's why I'm putting everything kind of close. And in the end, uh, we're not gonna be throwing away anything that's unused. Once you get everything just where you like it, go ahead and delete that rectangle. And this last part is pretty important. You're going to select all of your images and you are going to attach and then flatten, and that's going to give you one solid print and cut image. So you'll see that layer, it's all consolidated into one thing. At this point, I want you to save your project and name it something that you can come back to easily. It's important to do this step because doing water slide decals is not like an instant print and cut. After you print it, you're going to have to spray it with um, a sealer and you'll have to come back to cut it later. So if it's not saved and easily locatable, um, you might just have a little bit of an issue. So here you'll see it puts a bounding box around your project and that's going to show your Cricut where to cut. Here I want you to select send to printer and that's going to put this little pop-up box up here and I'm gonna show you how to print at home. So where it says printer, a little drop down menu will come up and you need to select the printer that you're going to use. Mine automatically pops up. I do not add bleed for these. And then I want you to use system dialog and then click print. Another pop-up comes up and that's going to give you the option to change your print quality and the type of paper that you're using for this printout. Um, you wanna act as though you are printing a photo. So click preferences and change that depending on um, whatever your printer says. Change your photo size to letter if you're using a full page, um, material type or media type, excuse me, and high print quality, and then click OK and then print. And that should send directly to your printer, but I'm gonna show you the other option available as well. I took mine to a professional printer, so here's what I did. From the drop-down menu, I selected Microsoft Print to PDF, did not add bleed, 
and then clicked print, which allowed me to save it to a thumb drive on my computer. And then I took it to Office Max and I had them print on their professional laser printers with laser decal paper, which is really important. Like I said before, you don't want it to melt inside of their printer, which would be awful. So make sure that you're using the correct kind for the printer that you're using. Here I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you have saved it to your computer. It's taking a little bit of time here, but I'm gonna open up the file where I saved it, and you'll see that I named it Take to the Printer, and it is a PDF, and it looks just like what you saw on your Cricut um, Design Space. So it still has a little offset there, and it looks great. Be pretty careful with your decal once it's come out of the printer. You're going to want to leave it undisturbed so it doesn't get smudged. You cannot go directly from printing to cutting. You will have to seal it, which we'll go over in the next video, but I do want to show you how to pull up from your projects lists and get ready to cut. So imagine we just opened that and we're going to click make it. Rather than printing, we're going to select I have already printed, and it's going to take you directly to the cut page that you're used to seeing with vinyl. Select your base material and send it to your machine. In the next video, we'll show you how to add it to your acrylic keychains.